May 9th. I love this place. The Bite Me Barbecue. I <laughs> You've got to go to Kansas. <laughs> and we did. And this is my another a New Yorker uh, car. I don't think you do anything you don't want. I'm just saying, we're all headed for Dodge City. We think you should come along. <laughs> well, that's what we did. We headed towards Dodge City. And this is what we saw. There's the phase array radar. And there's the supercell. Again, it looks smooth and laminar. There's the wall cloud. And we were <coughs> expecting a tornado to form somewhere in here. Alas, it didn't. It did produce very large hail and gave us a run for the money. And there's a, aren't these storms beautiful? Yeah, they are. They're gorgeous. They're just gorgeous to look at. Look at, look, at, look at all the striations up here. <coughs> And then the Weather Channel was, uh, was with us on this particular day. And when I took this picture, I was doing a, two live shots for the Weather Channel. And believe me, when you're standing there and they shove the microphone in front of your face and say, what's going on, Dr. Bluestein? And you want to turn it around and s you want to actually just look and take pictures. But it was a beautiful, beautiful <coughs> storm. Uh, and that's what it looked like when I was on the air. You don't see my face. Okay. A uh, couple days later, uh, near La Junta, Colorado. Col uh, Colorado is a great place to chase storms. It's really clear. You can see forever. Supercell formed. This is amazing to me. A supercell formed up over the Continental Divide somewhere, up at high elevation, and it became a supercell just west of Pueblo, Colorado, and it kept moving east. And it became a super, it was a supercell producing large hail. There's the wall cloud, tornado warning on it. There's the core of the storm and wall cloud. <coughs> then a second supercell, well, there was actually the first supercell to the right. This is the southern one. There's a southern supercell and a northern supercell that had a little funnel. And the, there's the northern supercell, a little bit close up look at the, the tail cloud going into the wall cloud. And then it was <coughs> fascinating to see visually what was happening and also look on the radar to see what was to, to see what was happening. But the northern supercell and the southern supercell collided. And when they collided, they produced the mothership. Ooh, wow. Wow. <laughs> big HP supercell. And you know, here's where the big hail is, where the sun is shining. Any, all the, uh, the the chasers, the vortex people that were over here, they had damage, and we were lucky for this one that we ch we stayed ahead of it. There's the tail cloud. Circulation is right in here. That's where the, where the circulation is. And they chased us back to our hotel near Lamar. And there's a uh, when it gets late, we just get these tremendous striations in, in the cloud base. It's, it's beautiful. It's heaven to stand out there and watch these things. On June 13th, the last day of Vortex, we had high hopes. And we did a supercell. And there's the flank of the supercell. And a tornado warning uh, issued momentarily. But there's an interesting story that goes with our last storm of Vortex 2, which some of you may or may not have heard about. And I'm going to show you a picture showing the radar, the phased array radar and the supercell storm. Now I want you to look. This is, an, this is an interstate highway that goes from Amarillo to Pampa. And this, it says right lane ends. This is your typical Texas farm road. The exit says farm road FM something. Okay. Well, we took it. We wanted to stop. We got and we were collecting radar data. And then some guys came by with machine guns. <laughs> well, this is the twilight zone. This is when you take an exit, and it doesn't say, don't go here. <laughs> it just says, Texas Farm Road, so and so. Um, and apparently, we were near a nuclear weapons plant. Oh, no. The Pantex nuclear weapons plant. These look like Halliburton guys, or, or I don't know. What. <laughs> and they were polite and forceful. And to make a long story short, they said we had to leave. And I said, but there's no sign saying 
Well, they had machine guns. <laughs> <laughs> now, it turned out that I didn't really care because we were about to leave at that point. We'd been there for about 25 minutes. <clears throat> Our radar is from the Naval Postgraduate School. It's a Navy radar. And when my contact back there found out about this, they said, heads are going to roll there because they were not supposed to tell someone not to have a Navy radar there because that's not even military. Apparently, that's EPA. But I said, ah, I'm not going to cause any trouble. <laughs> but the first time I've ever, ever gone storm chasing, had guys come up with machine guns. <laughs> yes, we're about to irradiate the nuclear weapons plant. <laughs> <laughs> so you not only get to you not only get to meet interesting uh, guards, but we I got to meet uh, Miss Oklahoma, who turns out is a meteorology student in our department. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> oh, <God. laughs> You, go uh, uh, you get to meet you get to meet Mike Bettis from the Weather Channel, and you get to meet the Tin Man. <laughs> uh, that's in Liberal Kansas. There's a they have a whole thing there. It's Oz, and you don't want to know. It, it's a real tourist trap. Oh, and there's oh, two guys there. there. These guys have tattoos with tornadoes on there. Oh, and they're okay. really dedicated. The future. Uh, Vortex 2 will be held in spring of 2010. More of the same. More media frenzy. Uh, we're, we're going into an El Nino year, and I never make long-range predictions. But I do know from my limited experience that El Nino years are not kind to us. They're great for the southeast, but not good for us. But we'll see. Um, I don't know how many radars there'll be. Two new things. One is that um, I have an NSF grant uh, to have ProSensing and Amherst build what we call the Rapid Expo. This is a rapidly scanning polarimetric radar. So now we're going polarimetric rapid scan. And it's going to be the first rapid scan polarimetric alpha radar. We should have it in time for Vortex 2, year 2, but we're only going to test it, so I don't guarantee anything. Second thing, uh, right now, at, when I get back, the following week, uh, I'm going to be in, uh, I have a meeting in Woods Hole after this, it turns out. Uh, I have to go to, and then going back to Boulder, and scanning Doppler radar is being added to the phased array radar. So we hope to make measurements in clear air with the Doppler LIDAR. <coughs> so that should be fun. The most dangerous thing about the storm chase? Never pick up never pick up Where was that? Just left of Oklahoma City. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Oh my God. I, 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 hit, I managed to get my picture taken whenever I see weird signs, some of which I cannot repeat in polite company such as this. But we, we go through strange towns that have unusual names and stuff. <laughs> Ask me some other time. <laughs> And this is an accurate of storm chasing. This is not Photoshop. This is real. Um, just a, 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 a blatant plug. My, my advisor was Fred Sanders in MIT. We have a, a, a just came out last year, some epic dynamic meteorology, a whole series of papers that Lance Bozart and I edited. And if you're a weather nut, you probably want to get this. You already have it. Uh, if you're not a weather nut, there are my two textbooks, and then my Tornado Alley book, which is out in paperback, so it's cheap now. I went storm chasing yesterday. I flew from Denver to Boston, and then drove down here from Boston, and uh, storms were going up just north of Denver International Airport as I took off. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the weather situation out there right now but we have uh, very strong winds at 500 millibars. Unusually strong for the summer because of the trough that's out here. And uh, there were easterly winds, uh, southeasterly winds to the surface, 50, two points in the 50s. These storms in northeast Colorado went on to produce baseball-sized hail. Uh, some of you may have seen the Weather Channel, the 